Hello everyone, welcome to this video and welcome to this course. This course entitled as introductory course on design of three phase induction motors. And in this course, I am going to design a three phase induction motor and compare with two existing benchmark motors. I selected two motors from two well-known brands as benchmarks of this course. This one is from the VEG company and this one is from Siemens. Characteristics and parameters of these two motors are the same. The output power is 1 HP and the number of poles is 4. So the synchronous speed in these motors is equal 1500 RPMs. So we can see the characteristics of these two motors here in this table. That is our course objective. We are going to design this induction motor with these uh, properties and compare with these benchmark motors. The only difference between these two motors is the frame material. Uh, here the frame material is aluminium and here is the cast iron. Also you can see the data sheets of these two motors. This is the data sheet of the Siemens motor. Here you can see the rated voltage and the output power of the motor 0.75 kilowatts, 1 HP. When we supply the motor with 50 Hertz supply. So during the course, we will go through this uh, data sheet for uh, Siemens motor and for the VEG motor. Uh, we will investigate these numbers and uh, study these uh, details. So first of all, let's have a look on course content. Then we will uh, start the analytic design as well as finite element analysis of the motor step by step in the next videos. So uh, we will review the efficiency classes, uh, standards related to the standard frames and also uh, I will show you the internal dimensions of these two motors, right? Uh, the stack length, outer stator diameter. Then we will start the analytic design of the motor and we will do the analytic design step by step, calculation of the parameters, derivation of the output equation of the motor, uh, actually uh, motor sizing, then uh, after the motor sizing we can calculate parameters like the weight of the rotor and the stator cores, uh, we can calculate the efficiency, line current, and so on. After the analytic design, uh, we will start the finite element analysis of the motor. So we will create a fully parametric model in the ANSYS Maxwell software, and we will do dynamic simulation of the motor 
uh, also we will do uh, magnetostatic simulations to calculate the self-inductance, mutual inductance or uh, magnetic loading of the motor. I will explain. Here you can see the motor model. We will generate the motor model uh, from scratch and I will explain all details and settings for creation of the model and analyzing it. Here you can see the analysis types, different designs. Here is the dynamic simulation and here you can see the results. For example, the startup speed curve of the motor. Here is the iron losses, phase currents. You can see the startup current and the steady state current waveforms, power factor and so on. Uh, here, as you can see, the steady state speed is 1400 RPMs. Also, you can see the same number in the Siemens data sheet here. This is the rated speed of the motor. Actually, in this course, we are going to replicate this uh, motor, this uh, available commercial motor. So, also here we have uh, armature field calculation. In the armature field analysis, only we excite the stator winding to be able to calculate the magnetic loading uh, flux distribution in the middle of air gap due to balanced excitation of the stator winding. So, we will extract the fundamental component and the fundamental component is the actually uh, is of interest in our design. I implemented these uh, calculations in the Excel software. Here you can see the analytic calculations of the design. I prepared uh, this Excel file to implement our analytic equations. Here you can see the inputs and outputs of the uh, design for motor parameters. So uh, I will explain all of these parameters in detail during the course. Uh, also, here we have other tabs that I will explain in detail. Another topic that is important is the equivalent circuit uh, parameters. We should be able to extract the equivalent circuit parameters of the motor using the finite element method. So, as you know, we have two tests to calculate the equivalent circuit parameters of induction motors. The first one is the no load or open circuit test and the second one is locked rotor or short circuit test. So uh, we will do these uh, two tests in the software. Here you can see these two models, the no load analysis and locked rotor analysis. In the no load analysis, we don't apply any load on the shaft, so the motor is free to rotate. And here you can see the rotor speed. Uh, here you can see the steady state one near the synchronous speed, a little bit lower because we have friction, right? We have friction, so the speed is a little bit lower than the synchronous speed. Also here you can see the phase current, uh, power factor and so on. Also this is the locked rotor test. In the locked rotor test we lock the rotor. The rotor speed is equal to zero and we apply the phase voltage in such a way that we have the rated current 
right? For the state of winding. So in this case, we can calculate the ohmic losses and we can calculate the equivalent circuit parameters. You can see the results. This is the locked rotor torque, right? Uh, the average value of the steady state waveform of this curve is equal to the starting torque, right, of the motor. So we will do these two tests to derive the equivalent circuit parameters. Here you can see these two tables. Uh, this tab, equivalent circuit parameters, right? We can calculate equivalent circuit parameters either by the transient solver or eddy current solver. I will explain details, right? The derivation of equivalent circuit parameters using the eddy current solver is faster than the transient solver. But also transient solver is a generic method. You can include nonlinearities in the problem. So when we have equivalent circuit parameters, we can calculate the torque speed curve of the induction motor, right? This torque speed curve is also presented in data sheet of the motor. This is the vague motor, and you can see the torque speed curve of the motor here. After doing this test, we also can study the motor in a more detailed manner. Actually, the next goal is derivation of the vector diagram of the motor, right? So we will derive the vector diagram of the induction motor. And also we will uh, use this vector diagram to calculate the angle between the stator field and rotor field and study the motor performance based on the vector diagram. Uh, I will explain details later. So another important topic is the torque speed curve and we will calculate torque speed curve of the motor. Uh, as I said, both using the finite element method and the equivalent circuit method and uh, we will compare also, we will calculate the magnetizing current using the analytic equations and also using the finite element model. We will study the circle diagram of the motor. Circle diagram is an interesting characteristic of induction motors. So we will study that. And based on the circle diagram, we will do a sensitivity analysis. Finally, uh, we will study the double cage structures and different uh, motor torque speed curve types, different classes of induction motors, uh, type A, B, C, and D. And we will discuss NSNR combination selection. As you know, the selection, proper selection of the number of stator slots and rotor slots is a challenging topic in design of induction motors. So we will calculate the torque repel and harmonics that exist in the voltage waveform and also we will discuss these two important tables right we have harmful torques in induction motors and if you don't select a proper combination for number of stator and rotor slots uh, you will have a high torque repel you might have a bad startup performance 
for the motor if the effect of uh, higher harmonics is considerable right so okay this was just an overview of the course contents and our aims so let's uh, continue in the next video thanks for watching